Hi, this lesson is for standard 3.2, plate tectonics and Pangea. While looking at a map of the world, have you ever noticed that the continents look like pieces of a puzzle? If they were moved closer together across the Atlantic Ocean, they would fit together neatly to form a giant landmass. Alfred Wagner was a German scientist and Arctic explorer who suggested the concept of continental drift. Continental drift is the idea that the continents move around on Earth's surface. In the early 1900s, Wagner hypothesized that the continents were once connected. When connected, these continents formed a supercontinent called Pangaea. Since Pangaea, the continents have drifted ever so slightly to their current location and will continue to drift slightly every year. So let's take a look at the image on the right. 200 million years ago we had Pangaea, but 135 million years ago we had two major continents, Laurasia and Gondwana. 65 million years ago you can see how the continents continue to move and today the continents are in their current location. There is tremendous evidence for Pangaea. The best pieces of evidence, however, are fossils found in all continents with no other explanation except that they must have been connected at one time. This then leads us to the theory of plate tectonics. Earth's crust is broken into several plates or pieces. These plates can move up to two inches every year. The best way to think of plates are like the broken shell fragments on a hard-boiled egg. If the egg is squeezed or moved ever so slightly, the fragments or the plates on top will move too. Here's a drawing of the plates. Can you find Maine? What plate are we on? Yep, the North American plate. Let's find something a little more difficult. How about Kenya? Which plate is Kenya on? Kenya's in Africa, so it's actually on the African plate. Now we're going to change topics slightly to discuss seafloor spreading. During World War II, the United States Navy needed to locate enemy submarines hiding on the bottom of shallow seas. Because of this, large areas of the ocean floor were mapped for the first time. American naval officer Harry Hess did some of the mapping. His work helped develop the theory of plate tectonics. Harry Hess hypothesized that new ocean floor was created at the ridges on the oceans, thus pushing the continents apart. So let's take a look at the image. You see where the, the red line? That's showing how new magma is coming up through. Do you see the two arrows pushing the oceanic crust to the sides? That's because the new magma is squeezing its way through and pushing the crust to the right and to the left. So what evidence is there of this mid-ocean spreading? Well, there's actually tremendous evidence if we look at the age of the rock. The newest rock is always near the ridge, and the oldest rock is farther away. So let's take a look at the image. Do you see the blue on the very top? Well, that's the new material. Then in the second picture, you can see how the blue is kind of split into two parts. Now we introduce the green, okay? That's the newest material then that's split into two parts. And finally, in the last picture, we see the presence of red, again showing a new material. But do you see how each time we're given new material, it's pushed to both the left and the right? That's showing spreading. Here's a really good image of seafloor spreading. Okay, we're getting rising magma from the asthenosphere, 
and it's pushing its way up through the mid-ocean ridge. And as it's pushing its way up through, the oceanic plates are moved to the left and to the right. So why do the plates move? What's causing the magma to rise? There are these things called convection currents that cause the splitting in the Earth's crust along the mid-ocean ridges. The new material pushing the old farther away causes the plates to move. This new material is surfacing because of convection currents. So what are convection currents and why do we even care? Okay, good question. The lower mantle is actually being heated by the really, really hot core. As that material is getting really hot, it actually becomes less dense and it starts to rise in the mantle. It goes up. So as the material in the lower mantle is heated, it expands and rises up. Now we've got cold material on top. That cold material is actually really dense and it's going to sink down. So we're creating a cycle here. That cold material will actually be heated by the core again and it will rise again. Then it will cool and sink where it will be heated again. Do you see how it's a circle? It's the same way in our mantle. So let's take a look. Do you see all the red arrows? Those are showing convection. Okay, so let's follow one with our finger. Let's start near the lower mantle by the outer core. Now pretend that the material is getting really, really hot. Well, as it gets hot, it expands and rises up towards the surface. That's where we get our magma coming through at the mid-Atlantic ridge. Then as it's traveling along the asthenosphere, it's farther away from the core and it starts to cool. But as it cools, it becomes denser and thus sinks. So it's going back down towards the outer core or near the lower mantle where it's going to be warmed again. Do you see a pattern now? It's a big circle. That actually finishes up our lesson for standard 3.2. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Good luck on your pieces of evidence.